uh, I found uh, well, the town had a uh, plan done of the playground facilities done by Mitchell Duane, the landscape architects, and uh, I have that here. That's this, that's this drawing that I have here. Briefly, um, looking at the right-hand side of the, of the Pond Cove school complex, which is the elementary side of the, the site, uh, we have the original uh, kindergarten air classroom building here, the cafeteria, what's known as the portico and the uh, Pond Cove Elementary School. And presently, there is an area um, that is paved between the Pond Cove Elementary School and the Lunt School, this being the Lunt School. Um, this is the library, uh, a, a new playground facility, and an, uh, another playground in this area here. Um, what we're proposing to do is to build a 58 by 56 foot um, temporary classroom facility, uh, which will include a media center. Uh, in this location here. Um, the if you look at your um, drawing sheet number two, you will notice the, the building location in re relationship to the uh, property lines. Uh, we're, we're, the building is going to be located uh, 175 feet from um, the uh, existing fence, which is by the police station and uh, um, Mr. Holcomb's property. And of course, the uh, entrance drive is existing and the building will be lined up with the front of the Pond Cove element, uh, Elementary School uh, in this location and is 60 feet uh, back from uh, the drive. Uh, sheet number uh, three in your drawings is the floor plan which uh, probably gives you a better picture um, of the proposed um, building. Um, you will see that on the left-hand side of the drawing is the, the um, Pond Cove Elementary School. On the right-hand side of the drawing here is the existing uh, Lunt School. And uh, we're proposing to build, uh, as you can see, two classrooms and a media center building, which is uh, 58 feet in width and uh, 56 feet in uh, depth. Um, the corridors will connect the two buildings together. Uh, there'll be vestibules uh, built in this area here so that both buildings will then be connected. And we intend to have the corridor ramped and we will build ramps on the exterior of the building so that uh, the building will be uh, accessible to the handicapped. Uh, its proposed construction will be uh, temporary. It'll be wood frame. Uh, the uh, basic uh, floor structure will be built on sauna tubes and uh, with uh, uh, wood trusses to span the roof. The exterior appearance of the building You can see on sheet number four, um, again, on the right-hand side, uh, at the bottom of that sheet, on the right-hand side, uh, left-hand side of the paper, you'll see the existing elevation of the uh, Pond Cove Elementary School. On the right-hand side is the two-story um, Lunt School. Uh, the elevation in the middle is the proposed uh, appearance of the temporary classroom building. You'll notice that uh, at either Extremity of that is a vestibule doors, and then each classroom will have a separate exit dir uh, leading directly to the outside. Uh, above that is a section, and the reason I, I cut a section through this was to show you that um, in the building itself, uh, uh, halfway down, a little more than halfway down the building, we will ramp the corridor 
uh, the hallway down so that it will then become level with the uh, entrance lobby to the lunch school so that uh, the handicapped student that was uh, presently attending schools in the Pond Cove Elementary School will have access to this facility as well as to the playground area which is in the rear of the site. And I don't know, uh, the, uh, the drawings have been submitted to the various departments. Uh, I believe you have a letter from uh, uh, Mr. Malley, the uh, town engineer, uh, with regards to drainage. Uh, we have submitted the drawings to the state fire marshal's office and they have been approved. Um, So I guess I'd, I'd just leave it to you if you have some questions. I have a couple just to go through and tick off the conditional use standards that we have to satisfy ourselves with in that. Uh, is the addition of this uh, uh, temporary classroom going to create any additional uh, traffic uh, conditions that don't already exist? No, none. No additional teachers, no... Uh, no. <clears throat> no, the uh, classroom will be in the same and the media center will actually there is going to be some materials that will be transferred from the existing library in the uh, uh, kindergarten building down to this facility. And uh, I take it uh, all of the schools are attached to public sewers? There will, well, the, the, no, the Pond Cove Elementary School is and ISPA. The building we're proposing will have no plumbing uh, in, in it. So it will not create any unsanitary conditions? No. In your uh, view, will the addition be aesthetically compatible with the schools that are there now? Well, let me ask the question differently. The standard we have to satisfy ourselves is that the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. There well, are some, in are light some. of the fact that it's temporary and, and in, uh, you know, I, I just look at it that way, then it won't be... Uh, something that won't be, I mean, the public is going to be aware of the fact that this, this structure is here, and I'm assuming they're going to be well aware of the fact that it's the type of the construction that we're using. It'll be texture 111 plywood and, and will be temporary in nature. So uh, the, the, question, the, the question came up last evening with the planning board in, in one of the, the statements that was uh, presented to the board and I believe uh, was acceptable to the board was uh, the idea that this would be a three to five year use and they asked if we would be willing or if the school board would be willing to accept this um, as a five-year proposal, um, you know, uh, contingent um, and that at the end of five years if something were to happen that they would have to come back for review. And so um, in answer to your question, I look at this as a temporary facility and, and in, that, in that, those terms, I, I I see nothing wrong with it, uh, you know. Was that condition accepted last night? Is that a condition of the planning board approval? So that if we were to attach a similar condition, that wouldn't add any burden to the school department. That is, that in five years, for example, you'd have to come back here if you wanted the temporary classrooms to remain to, to let us look at whether or not it's having any effect upon adjacent property values. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't add any burden to what's already imposed on you. The next standard is the, uh, that the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and the comprehensive plan. I take it this is a school building. It's certainly compatible with the use that's there and the use that's... Uh, yes, and, and for all practical purposes, we will not be disturbing uh, the, con the, the existing conditions will, will, for all practical purposes will remain the same. Uh, one of the concerns that the planning board had was uh, site drainage, uh, and erosion control and as can be seen from this uh, sketch here. This presently, this area right here um, is presently a paved area. So as far as impervious uh, surface is concerned, uh, we'll be building a, uh, a roof structure over an impervious surface. So um, 
one of the questions with, with that regard, and there is a catch basin in this location here as well as another one in here, so that the, the drainage problems and sanitary problems I don't see as a problem, no. Right. Let me read to you the last standard that we have to address, and mm -hmm. I'd like you to address it in whatever way you feel appropriate. The design and ex external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. Uh, I, again, I, I, I would um, look at this, and, and, and it has been designed in light of being a temporary structure, uh, and one which can be removed at the end of three to five years. Uh, obviously, if you've got two brick buildings, uh, I would, you know, I would like to see a brick structure, but that would be, without a question, a permanent structure. And uh, in light of what's uh, contemplated here, um, uh, and, the, and the fact that the school board has uh, or is completing a comprehensive study of their program, um, I look at this uh, and, and feel that this is a, a good solution to the temporary solution to the problem that we have. And architecturally, I, I can't say that it's a detriment, no. This may be a little different than the previous one about adverse effect on values, which certainly once you remove it, takes away any potential adverse effect. But during the time that it's there, I suppose it, if it's not attractive, it could, uh, the standard may be one that addresses the current and not the long term. I mean, I take it you don't believe it's going to be an unattractive. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, obviously if you, if you had, if you had your druthers, you'd like to see something differently. That's all I'm saying. And I'm, I'm just saying in light of the, of the problem that the solution uh, that we're proposing is, is, is a reasonable solution and one that is not, a, I would not consider it a detriment to the neighborhood. And in, 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 as you're saying, if you're going to make it contingent upon a, uh, a five-year review, then, then you're protecting the town and, and the abutting property owners from that use. Howard? Yes, uh, is the, the temporary use Is that going to be temporary, or is it something that the school is going to find that in, a, in five years continues to exist? And I, I guess, in other words, what I'm asking is, is if, if this is a problem now, uh, is it going to go away? And if it isn't going to go away, then why are we doing something temporary and not more permanent? This is temporary because our elementary enrollments have increased significantly. Uh, we have just completed a study for the New England School Development Council on uh, several options to solve our long-term problems. The new board, which will meet in July, will uh, have to take into account that study. It'll need to philosophically design the kind of organization that it wants for the next five or ten years. After that, form follows function. They'll have to decide what they would like to build. And thirdly, they'd have to sell whatever they want to build to the community. So I suspect uh, we're talking about a two or three year period of time where we would study, uh, make the designs, sell the designs, and implement them. So we're looking at this as a very temporary kind of thing. And uh, hopefully in the next two to three years, we will solve the long range pro uh, program with permanent buildings. Bruce, do you, do you foresee any other, any other temporary classes being built in the uh, three to five year period? No, I do not. Uh, the only... Uh, reason for anything like that would be that if we uh, do not, over the next five to six years, uh, develop a building program. Along that, before you sit down, Dr. Pelletier, along that same line, um, I'm a little concerned, as I think Howard is too, about, about, about the, the temporariness of the temporary building. If you're saying that the, it will take, are you saying that it will take two to three years for the new board to develop its philosophy? and come up with a proposal for new permanent buildings, which would mean that, is it, is it possible at the end of the five years that no 
new permanent buildings would be in place and that is it likely that you might be back here within five years to say to us we need an extension of this um, temporary classroom building? Uh, I would hope not. Uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, uh, we've done our homework. We have the alternatives. Uh, the board, in, in a short order, could determine what it wants to do. I suspect that if there's any stumbling block, it would be whether or not the community will buy what the board would suggest. Uh, I don't see that because uh, I think our need is real. We've presented the uh, demography. Uh, we pretty much can clearly see what's going to happen to this community for 10 years. And uh, I don't see any reason, at least at this point, why we shouldn't get underway uh, uh, minimally two years, uh, implement it the third year, and have a full-fledged program going. Now, there are all kinds of things that could happen that I can't foresee. There are 142 portables in Cumberland County. I can't tell you how long they've been here or there, but uh, I can't speak for those communities, but based on my tenure here, I would suspect that uh, we will be well on our way. We've done our homework, and uh, we're all ready to face the philosophical aspects, and then we'll just probably go through the building phase. You use the word portable. Uh, is that a misnomer? I mean, is this a portable structure, or is it just an inexpensive structure that is, is temporary and will be torn the, down? Uh, when the you nomenclature have... is a temporary portable classroom structure. Now, that's the nomenclature. But it, it couldn't be put on a flatbed and moved away at the end of five years, or could it? I mean, Good. Kind of if you would remove the, uh, the pillars, right. and some come that way on wheels. This one's going to be built from uh, on sauna tubes. This will be on sauna tubes. I, I have a question for Mr. Armitage. Is, is the design of this structure such that if for some reason we didn't have permanent structures in place within five years, uh, and it didn't seem like for some, let's say the town is unwilling to finance uh, new, con new uh, permanent construction, that this temporary structure could, bricks, a uh, brick facade could be added to it in its present, des the design it presently has so that it would be compatible with the other two buildings it's attached to? Or is it something that would have to be either continued in, in, uh, with the T111 or, or uh, torn down and a complete new structure started with brick? I would hope that, as the superintendents mentioned, that, that a program would be in place so that, you know, I'm something could be done. assuming there isn't a program in place. Yeah. Assuming that there isn't? Yeah, and they wanted to keep um, this. They came back to us in five years, and there'd be a lot of pressure on, on us, I think, at that point, not to tell you that, not to tear it down or not to remove your conditional use permit, and we get put between the rock and yeah, the this, place. Could bricks be added? Yes, this, this building could then be veneered with brick and a foundation put under it, and, and uh, you know, it could be made a permanent structure. I, I I don't foresee that only because of the costs associated to it. I mean, this will be um, on sauna tubes, and uh, the building walls will come down, and there'll be a, basically a skirt going to the ground, so that uh, you know it is not going to be a permanent structure. That's not the intent. Uh, if it were, it would be built, you know, with a foundation and a concrete slab, and and, uh, and designed entirely differently, so it's... Uh, I understand, but if somebody envisions it now as a temporary structure and comes back to us in five years and wants to make it permanent, yeah, we it, could it, attach as a condition at that point that it be placed on a permanent foundation and a brick veneer uh, placed around it to make right. it compatible with the other mm -hmm. buildings. That wouldn't be a problem other than that, how much it's going to cost. That's right. Design and structural advisor. Would there, that wouldn't present a problem, no. Okay. Any other questions from any members of the board at this time? I'm not going to respond to a citizen who claimed that the school board was going to create such an eyesore that the community would be embarrassed into creating a uh, undertaking. I beg your pardon? How might you respond to a citizen who uh, looked at this in, 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 in very cynically and said that this was going to be an eyesore which would embarrass the community into undertaking the construction program to the more permanent structure? Well, I. I I think the need is there. I mean, it's, it's a matter of, of uh, facing the realities of having to have the classroom space. Um, there, there is also some work that is, that is necessary whether we build this temporary facility or not. There were some 
there, there are some problems in, in exiting of, of the Pond Cove Elementary School for handicapped access, which, which the school board addressed a year ago. Uh, so there was some work that was going to have to be done in these areas. Uh, this, actually, this temporary facility is going to facilitate uh, handicapped access uh, and a little better circulation for, for this facility. As far as the citizens, I think, um, you know, anybody, and as the superintendent has said, you can drive through most any community and obviously look at a, uh, a school and see uh, a facility like this and know that it was, that it's intended to be a temporary facility because it's basically just there. Uh, I mean, it's not built as a permanent uh, part of it. And I just would hope that, that and, and maybe uh, the, the, by doing this, the, com the community will become aware of the, of the concerns for uh, the demand for uh, additional educational space. It's something that, that in the past was never dealt with. You know, you used to always go to overcrowding and, and then um, build the school uh, sort of after the crunch had, uh, had, had come. So now, uh, because of this, uh, we can meet this immediate uh, problem and, and, and resolve it. Have you considered putting a brick veneer on it at this point to make it more compatible with the existing structure? And how much would that impact it on the cost? I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that unless we were going to make this, uh, unless this were being designed uh, with a, a, a comprehensive program so we knew how this was going to work in relation to the program. I don't think that would be feasible. Uh, the additional cost wouldn't, wouldn't. Uh, what kind of facade is it going to be on? Is it hardboard or what, what kind of, is it a metal facade? No, no, it's a, a texture 111 plywood. It's a plywood building. It will be stained um, like a gray. Uh, it could be stained red if, if uh, the community felt that it would look better to, to match this. But it's mostly, uh, you, you can see them, uh, well, I guess probably the, the one that I've seen, there are two that I've seen recently. One is over at the um, uh, Oak Hill Elementary School in Scarborough. Uh, not Oak Hill, it's uh, Pleasant Hill. Pleasant Hill Elementary School is one right on the end of that facility, and there's another one. Uh, at the Blue Point School in Scarborough, uh, and, you know, as, as far as neighboring communities. I, I don't think that excuses it. Don't, don't misunderstand. I think it's just the idea. Howard? Uh, of course, any, any building like that, Bob, you know, looks temporary. If, if you just put it up there and it's laying near Stark. Uh, is there any plan of uh, amenities or like landscaping or things like that that would be contemplated to ease that? <laughs> Well, we're basically, I don't really think that in, in, in elevation, as far as the entrance drive is concerned, this building is going to be quite as conspicuous as we think because we are going to keep this tree here, and that pretty much blocks that. Uh, and from the back, of course, uh, the playground area is sheltered, so it probably won't be as apparent as, as some facilities are. It's not as though we were building it on the end down here where everybody in the world would see it. Uh, uh, but no, we didn't, uh, where this is paved, we, we didn't plan to uh, build things uh, in front of the skirt, let's say, uh, basically because uh, of it being temporary. It's something we've talked about, um, but we really didn't get into that additional cost. Is there any? Yeah, Bob, is there any, have there any measures been taken which would allow the town to <coughs> move this building out of the day so that they could recover some of their expenses should they wish to sell it or relocate it to another area in town? Yeah, is, that, is that a reasonable concern at this time that some that measures be taken so that that could occur at a later date so that they wouldn't have to destroy the building? Um, it could be done basically because it's up on Sonitube, so you could put panels underneath it and, and lift yeah. it and roll it. But the design now would allow you to move it without the, yeah. You could, the you could, you could, could, could salvage it, yes. Salvage it, either for its own use or, or move it, you know, move it to some area. Yeah. yeah, they could, they could do that. That could be done. Will, will any construction commence before the end of school? Uh, yes, that's one of the concerns that we have. One of the reasons that we've asked the, the town to um, review this uh, as expeditiously as possible because the contractor would like to start. Uh, uh, drilling and boring for the sauna tubes, uh, I believe the 14th or 15th of uh, June, uh, and, and locate those. 
um, but like the week before school is completed. Then that way there, once school is over, then he can come in and start the framing. The only construction will be the location and drilling for sawn tubes? Yes, but I believe, uh, oh, I haven't really gotten into that with a contractor, but I believe it's the intent that this be cordoned off so that the students will not be in that area. That's going to be my next question, because one of the standards we have to uh, address is tra hazardous traffic conditions. And there's no if question. talking about a school with young children, what precautions will be taken to ensure that a truck isn't backing up into a small child that's going to be running across the, uh, the area? Is it going to be fenced off? Yes. Yeah, that all be trucks be restricted to a certain area, at least during school hours, uh, a pattern of, of coming in and out so that they won't be driving all over the place? Yes, it would, the, the, the workload that's anticipated at the initial outset is, is very limited. It will be basically just setting the sauna tubes, and, and, but it will be cordoned off, and as it stands right now, the students, and even in the future, uh, the offloading or the arrival of the students uh, will be through the portico uh, from henceforth. And next year, during the school year, the students will enter and, and exit from this facility here. Do you know whether or not those school buildings will be used at all during the summer? I and mean, perhaps if you can't address that, Dr. Pelletier right, could, as to what use will be made of the schools during the summer oh, while well, construction. Faculty workshop. Right. No children. My, my, excuse me, my understanding was, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I was under the impression that community services program would be using um, part of the Pine Cove building for the preschool program in the summer. Is that, has that been changed, do you know? I don't think that's been decided at this okay. point. And we have several other facilities they could use. I think we'd like to consider uh, just how hazardous it would be you know, when we see what's really going to be happening. I would be very uncomfortable with any children yeah. up there if there's any kind of construction mm -hmm. going on at all during the summer. Would it be a problem, Dr. Pelletier, if as a condition of approval we, re we re prevented or prohibited the use of those buildings during the construction period by any school-aged children? We, we it might be unreasonable if uh, they're working at that end and we were to use the far kindergarten end well, along with the uh, gymnasium or the cafeteria. Uh, that's quite a long distance from any kind of construction. All right, you're talking about um, looking at that plan, the left hand, using the left hand uh, uh, building. So but I would if suspect we, if, if you were to place any conditions, that uh, you might make them around the construction area and leave the uh, far end as free as possible. Now, we aren't going to put youngsters there unless we have to. How about the, uh, the area uh, if, if we uh, you restricted the use from, I don't know how to describe it, the, the walkway basically between the two buildings di from that point down towards the construction, does that create a problem? In other words, if you were to come to the right of the portico yes, and, restrict and allow us to use all yes. this, that would not create a problem. And, and also the, and restrict the use down yes. there. This, that, that the this we could free up. We'd have to. I was Bruce? I was just going to suggest to... Uh, Restrict the use of uh, of buildings directly adjacent to the construction. We may have a uh, code-wise have a problem with that, and that that is the second means of egress for that building. Um, and we're not going to be we can't put ourselves in a position as to tie up an egress. Which, which building? Um, if you were to secure yes, secure that area, that's the second means of egress for that school. That's what we're saying. We're saying you can't use that building. You could not use that building adjacent to the construction. You use the building and to the left. Use the other side. Yes. Yeah. Basically, on yeah. this point so right there. there. Yeah. yeah. That point left, you could use. That point right, you could not. Is that a problem? Well, they can get out with this. There will be two, two uh, egresses from that far building. I mean, you have the protocol and the uh, the one that up at the Scott Dyer Road. Yeah. yeah. Well, you also have to deal with length of travel. Um, that's something we'd have to review. Um, that's a possibility, but... Um, what do you mean, length of travel? Well, you have to have an exit within... Okay. Leave it to okay. That's the school now. And Excuse me? Go, that's a, that building is a self-contained school now, and there's two exits, and they would maybe be changed. And the children have the same length to go... Okay. Now. No, I'm talking about securing the areas where the additions are going to be built, where this, this building is going to be built. Okay. 
Well, again, yeah. that's something that we'd have to review. I, I don't know yeah. just what, what all the facilities yeah. are there. This, but this would be the only exit that would create a problem. This, this, this is not an entrance or an exit now anyway. This is the entrance and the exit from this building and there's an entrance and an exit from this building. But I think going back to your question, this is the portico, this entrance is in here. The second means of egress from this building is this in this direction. So that would be the, the exit that you're concerned about. Right. But if you're looking at it from, from, this, from the portico in that direction, there's a means of egress here, there's a means of egress here, there's a means of egress here, and there's a means of egress here. So there's more than adequate egress from the building. Any other questions by any members uh, of the board? Are there any other members of the school department or school board who wish to address or make any comments before I go on to others? Are there any uh, abutters or adjoining property owners who wish to make any comments? Are there any members of the public present who wish to make any comments concerning this appeal? Ernie, were there any written or oral communications with you concerning this uh, appeal? No, I weren't. Then I'll close the uh, public portion of this hearing and we will have our discussion and, uh, and vote. Uh, Peter, we did receive approval from the uh, Department of uh, Public Safety in Augusta, State Fire Marshal's Office. Okay. Uh, should we have some discussion first about any of the issues that are addressed by conditional use? I'm, I'm concerned about the construction um, and the children, the small children being there during the summer program. In any of the buildings or? Well, I guess, I'm, I, I, guess I understand the, the necessity for all these things happening at the same time. I, I'm very concerned um, that parents and the staff of the of the summer program and the community be made extremely aware of exactly where the construction will be, that, that they know where and where not to enter the building, uh, where the trucks might be during the day. Those are the kids that we're talking about, and I just would like to have as many people be aware of the situation as possible. Okay. Um. Anybody else have any uh, additional comments they wish to make? Um, I'm writing something out that uh, if you give me a few minutes, we can then discuss. I would, uh, Peter, I would agree with, uh, with Nancy and their concerns. Uh, being associated with construction, I know how appealing it can be for the young children to uh, to want to see what's going on. and. Uh, lead to a dangerous situation. Uh, and I would like to see that that we restrict the area uh, around the construction so that no, no, no spectators or children are allowed in that, in that, uh, in that general area. So no people at all or just, uh, or just no school-age children? I mean, for example, if the teachers wanted to use the, uh, for a workshop or something, uh, the build, one of the buildings immediately adjacent to the construction site, are you concerned about that too no. or only if it's kids? No, no I, I'm, I'm more concerned with kids, uh, children in the building or outside around the construction site. Is that your concern too, Nancy, or anybody? Um, mostly children, and I, and I am concerned too that um, because many people who have children in the summer program have children who will be at both locations. Part of the summer program takes place at the high school. And the small children will be up here, and there will be a lot of traffic, I would imagine, from parents back and forth. There could be, picking up children from one site and the other. But, uh, I think we need to do a little education about what, what the construction actually will involve with kids who may be going out to meet their parents. Or, Ernie, are there any ordinance provisions that require you to review barriers that are placed up around the construction site or signage, warning signs or caution signs that would be placed on those adjacent buildings or in the drive areas? Yeah, our building code allows us to put in place whatever measures we think are necessary to secure the area. 
one thing the board might want to address tonight is which entrance to the complex uh, is one entrance perhaps more favorable to use than the others as far as I don't know where off the 77 or sure off yeah of, I don't know where the I don't know where there. the activity is 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 the most uh, the, uh, the, the most activity is which entrance the, the is it best for the construction workers to use? Uh, I don't know. Well, the commercial entrance, I mean, you have the police department and the public works come off of 77. Right. If you come off of Scott Dyer, you've got school trail, you've got other buildings which may be used. It would seem to me that the access should be off of Route 77 and not off of Scott Dyer Road. I don't know whether that creates any problems in terms of construction, but it seems to me to be the correct means of access. I see a lot of people nodding, so I don't know if there's any objection to that. I'm talking about for construction vehicles oh. have access. I think that, that's what you were addressing was access for construction vehicles to the construction site. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bob, uh, I think you indicated before that you were ready to start construction middle of June. Yes. Uh, so a contractor has been selected. Yes. Uh, could I ask who that is? is that DNC, DNC Construction from uh, on Chevis Road. They're a small, a small contractor. I, I don't have experience. I don't know their overall track record. No, I don't have that. Yeah, I, I've never heard of them. Uh, is, is there a requirement in the uh, in the uh, construction documents that uh, that this, play, this area be fenced? No, I I wasn't involved in that process, uh, Howard. So I, you know, I I've been more or less retained as a consultant to help the school. So, but I I hear what you're saying, and that we, that obviously can be addressed. Is, I, the, is the school board or the town going to have a uh, a resident? Uh, on site at all times during construction? Uh, the only person that I know of would be Charlie, who's the uh, head custodian for this facility, who will, and of course Gary Spencer will be watching it also, you know, but there will not be a, a, a clerk of the works as you know, as we know it. Somebody who was experienced. Yeah, that's standing there, no. That, that, that makes me a little nervous, Bob. Yeah. How long is the proposed construction going to take? Uh, uh, approximately two months they, they anticipate being completed that's why we're trying to that's why they're trying to move it up a little bit so that once school is over they can really start to to, to move uh, ahead rapidly because they'd like to have the facility ready by the middle of August so they could start making the move move uh, the books and things that are in the present library here down into this media center and, and have everything ready so when school opens in September it'll be ready Let me suggest three conditions, and people might want to propose more on the assumption that this appeal is going to be granted in the first place. It seems to me, based upon what we've discussed, there would be at least three conditions that would be appropriate. First one would be that the approval shall expire five years from this date. Second one would be that access to the construction site be by vehicles only from Route 77 and not from Scott Dyer Road. And third, that the there be a condition that no children under the age of 18 be permitted to use either of the buildings immediately adjacent to the construction site, and that adequate barriers, as determined by the town uh, code enforcement officer, be placed around the construction site and that appropriate warning signs or caution signs be placed on the buildings immediately adjacent uh, to the construction site and in the driveways around the construction site. Those are the three that it seems to be based on our discussions and perhaps the last one is, I don't know if anybody feels it's too vague or general, but I, I guess I asked Ernie about 
what ordinances we had, and it seemed to me what he said was he has the authority under the ordinances to require that, and I guess basically what we're saying is we want him to do that, and we want to make sure that, you won't be able to read my writing, but uh, <laughs> make sure that there are adequate both barriers and caution and warning signs. Because there will be ch children, uh, there may be children using other, other uh, buildings in the complex area. And I don't know if anybody thinks of any other conditions or, or wants to modify what I'm proposing. I have a question about that. Um, if this is going to begin before school is out, then I don't understand, I don't see how we could keep anyone from under 18 in those two buildings because there will be children there. You're right. For the week that the week. they're going to be doing the uh, uh, the, the uh, for the sauna tubes, I hadn't. I was really addressing more during the summertime than I was the the I one week. We need to All right. Both of those. Bruce, we say that no major construction um, would start um, before school ends. I know what you say. Say major construction. I'm just trying to think of a word that uh, you could say. Well, I think what we could do as to my third condition is say that uh, effective uh, whatever the last day of school was, what is that, June 20th, 21st, something? 21st. Effective, the third condition would be effective June 21st. Prior to that time, no construction shall take place except for the uh, digging of holes for the sauna tubes. And uh, since that doesn't, I assume, how many, uh, how, how many men and trucks are, we're not talking about a lot of traffic construction traffic for those sauna tubes, are we? In terms of men and vehicles and equipment, what are we talking about? I'm talking about the week before school ends and you want... You're talking about pouring concrete during that week too or just digging the holes and having them ready to pour? You would be pouring concrete, I would, I would like to add one more position onto that, 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 that an individual, responsible individual from the, from, from the town, administration that is, be assigned to this project and be on site all times during construction to see that the safety provisions are, and are, are abided by. Um, why do you need somebody on site continuously? Well, my, this is only my personal opinion. Uh, I, I do not know the contractor, uh, so I don't know what his track record is. Bob doesn't really, this didn't indicate that he knew exactly what his track record is. Uh, I would rather be extra cautious in a situation like this than, than then be sorry after, because if an accident happens with a, with some individual on, on site there, it you know it could be you know real bad, and uh, and I'd rather take one step further in being cautious than, than being sorry after. If barriers are constructed around the construction site, and the two buildings adjacent to the construction site are not permitted to be used by school children, and I assume that Ernie could periodi periodically be checking that, even once a day perhaps, but certainly a couple times a week, make sure the barriers are up, warning signs are up, and so on. What addition, as far as hazards are concerned, as opposed to a clerk of the works that would make sure that the, you know, the, the plans are being followed, which is really none of our concern as board members, maybe as taxpayers, but not as board members. What, what would having somebody there eight hours a day add in terms of safety and so on? Well, you, you, you have to remember that, that the contractor is in business for, for certain motives, right? The, the people who are delivering the concrete are there, they've got to get there, unload it, get out, uh, so that they can get, you know, there's a, there's a tendency to be in a, in, a, uh, in a go situation. And sometimes in those situations, things can happen. Uh, uh, somebody doesn't hear the bell when, when, when the truck is backing up, uh, or 
doesn't understand what it is, or, or, you know, something, something like that. We're dealing with, with, with children who have, who have never been around probably a construction site or this close to a construction site. And what all I'm saying is I'd rather see the town or the school board spend additional monies to make sure that we don't have an accident or, or take every effort to make sure that we don't have an accident there than to be, than to be sorry. Yeah, and the, the, and the magnitude of money you're talking about, it, I don't think it's that great, especially when you're talking about the, uh, you know, what could happen. But I, I, I'd like to hear Bob's comments uh, in, in that way. Can I have something to clarify? Is that just until June 21st you want that somebody there? Until when school is out, then it's okay? As long as there's going to be children around that, that, that area. How, how, how long is construction? Two months? That's uh, eight weeks, eight, ten weeks. Oh, right. uh, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm only talking from experience. I know, I know, I know what can happen. Well, what, I, what I'm trying, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you in terms of the potential for, for accidents, and especially if people are rushing to get something done, but um, I guess I was envisioning the barrier that I was talking about going around the construction site and, and um, I hadn't really thought about how wide uh, the barrier would be, but if it, if it were to come out from the portico and go down to the end of the, beyond the construction site to the end of the building, wouldn't that effectively cordon off any possibility that uh, we could have a problem? Depends what, what you're talking about, barriers. Uh, a chain link fence or something like that? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I asked That may be more expensive than having a person. I asked Bob whether they were going to put chain link fence for, for expensive projects, and he said no. Well, I thought there was going to be some kind of barrier around the construction site. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm really not sure in relation to what Howard is addressing. Uh, I haven't gotten into that. As I said, I've more or less been retained as a consultant to help the, the board pursue uh, this aspect of the project. I, um, I was not involved in the construction documents for the actual building itself. This has been uh, uh, with this contractor. Um, I hear what Howard is saying, and I, I think that uh, the board hears Howard's concern. I haven't had a chance to talk with Mr. Chick. I, I would be inclined to say that uh, quite frankly, professionally, in light of the board's concern that um, we're only talking uh, two or three days time between the 14th and the 21st because there's a weekend in there. So, you know, I guess my reaction would be, uh, uh, and I'm, it's easy for me to say I'm not the contractor. I think the contractor obviously would like to have as much time. The more we take away from him, the, the more places him in a difficult position at the end of the project if we run into bad weather. By the same token, he doesn't want the liability of problems with the students any more than we do. So, you know, I, I guess my feeling would be that, as you say, if we can uh, uh, impress upon him that we want this space cordoned off uh, and that possibly he can't start until school is closed, then this would resolve the concerns that, that you have for the students. Because uh, they, they are going to be occupying this building, and and as Howard mentions, even though we we will have uh, a ready mix truck in here pouring those sauna tubes, uh, possibly one part of a day, and then they'll be out of there, and then they'll be done. Uh, I only vision uh, like a, a a day and a half's work to get themselves, you know, to lay this out, maybe a couple of days to lay this out, and then set up for the sauna tubes and pour the sauna tubes and leave the job. And then while that's setting up, then after school closes, come in and start framing. But those two days can uh, make a difference. So I, I, I guess I'm listening to the board and being a citizen of the community myself and the concerns that they have for the safety of the, of the children. Uh, I, I have to be honest with you, professionally, and I would be inclined to say, hey, we just don't want that liability. And therefore, you know, um, school closes, I believe, the 21st which is Tuesday. So, you know, if he starts on the 22nd, 
then everything then everything you've asked for is 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 in in place. I take it even during the period of the sonitude construction, there will be construction materials on site of, of maybe a limited nature, but uh, a little, but not not that much. It, it's basically the the intent is that he come in and 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 actually he's going to bring in a uh, like a post hole digger and dig those those holes, set the sonotubes and pour them. But um, you know, they all be dug in the, and poured in the same day. Uh, possibly. Or would you have holes in the ground? That no, no, there would be no empty holes, but there's going to be holes. I mean, you know, you, that's why I'm saying, when I'm listening to your concerns, I, I, I personally would rather see the board say, hey, I mean, what are we talking about? We know that we're not going to get, the planning board has to meet on the 16th, so we can't get the permission from the, uh, I believe that's the schedule from the planning board, is the 16th, so we aren't, really going to be in a position to start construction until the 21st, which is the Monday. Uh, what do we, <laughs> you know, for the safety and the welfare and of everybody here, I, I just... Let me ask Dr. Pelletier, what is the proposal with regard to cordoning off the construction area? Is, is it the intent of the, of the, do the plans require the contractor to construct a chain link fence or some similar type of barrier around the construction site? Snow fence. A snow fence? Yep. Howard, does your concern address itself just to the one week period while school is in session or are you, uh, are you and, and assuming that after school ends and we, we, we prohibit the use of the two adjacent buildings by children, um, do you still have the same concern? I'm, I'm primarily concerned with the deliveries of materials and even after school ends? After, excuse me, after school ends, there still will be children up in that area, certainly in the, in the kindergarten part of the building, but there will be, I think, the plan is still to have the summer preschool program up there. So uh, there will be children in that neighborhood. If, if we had a, and I'm not sure about a snow fence, because that's not very, very much of a barrier, but if you had a chain link fence starting at the portico, or maybe down a little ways, coming out into the road, and then down to the end of the building, and then attached, you know, with a with a gate that trucks can get in and out of. Doesn't that, doesn't that solve your problem? And then on the back, back side, something like that. I don't know if that's more expensive than having a person there for eight weeks. Uh, well, you were talking about having somebody there continuously, though, for that two-month well, period. When that, when that, when, when, when it's needed, I think. And who's going to determine when it's needed, and especially if the contractor, your concern, and I agree with you, is if he's rushing one day and a truck wants to sneak in off a of Scott Dyer Road, rather than, you know, they're not supposed to, how do you know that that's the day? It seems to me the only effective way to do it if you're going to have a person there is to do what you said, have a person there every day, eight hours a day, for the two months. And I would assume that's more expensive than putting up a chain link fence. I don't know. In fact, it would probably be more effective to have a chain link fence than a person because the person can't be everywhere. He can be in front of the building and some kid could sneak in in the back of the building and knock down the snow fence and, and be right there in the middle of construction before anybody knows it. Um, well, you added a condition, proposed condition, Let me ask Mr. Hamitridge, what do you think it would cost to construct a chain link fence six feet high as, um, as I've proposed it? I'm not really... Uh, a lot of money? Yeah. I'm not really sure you're going to get your value out of it. I think we're talking two well, different... Well, save a life, you've gotten your value out of it. So, I mean, you well, know, I, I um, we well, yeah, but, you know, any... You save somebody from getting hurt. Uh, possibly that's true, but, you know... Uh, we can also say that, you know, regardless of whether it's a snow fence or a chain link fence, if a person wants to get in over the fence, they climb over the fence. I mean, a little harder uh, with a chain, uh, six foot chain than a snow fence. You can my, uh, I think the concern that I have is is basically while is in this area here, and um, 
I think we can control that with a contractor. I think it can be done with a with a snow fence. Obviously, it, it becomes a you're basically trying to define an area that you don't want people to get into, and and that can be done. I think that's one issue. What I hear Howard's concern is is having somebody there uh, from the school department or somebody with authority that can tell that can intercede on behalf of the town and and tell the contractor that yes they're happy and no they're not happy rather than just relying on the contractor or his foreman or whatever the case might be to be doing uh, what what Howard's concerned about um, and in my response to that is having uh, worked with uh, the school department last year in relation to doing some handicap things there are always people around um, you know Charlie and Gary um, and a couple of the custodians are, are you know, usually painting and cleaning up. It's just a matter of making certain that that they're informed that somebody needs to come down here and watch this. Um, I I don't see that as being a major problem, not to the degree uh, you know of, of incurring an additional expense. The the um, you know a, a snow fence in this area, which which defines the space that you don't want people to to get into, I think is is sufficient notice. To tell people you don't want them be you know inside of that cordoned area. I would agree for you and I and any adult, but I'm not sure about a 10-year-old kid or a 12-year-old kid who's looking interested in the construction that's going on. I don't yeah. think a snow fence is going to stop. Uh, and and I don't. Curious. Yeah, and I'm not. I don't really know. I mean, I've done schools all over the state, and you never know how how they how they get where they get. You know, whether it's under it or over it or how they get into these things, uh, uh, but I'm just, you know, so it becomes a value judgment, and as you say, I agree with you, obviously, if it protects a, a person's life, but I think my feeling is that once we say that we're, if we're in agreement that we don't want to have construction start till after school is closed, and then I think uh, beyond that point, uh, there comes a grace period before uh, the summer program starts, and, and as long as we've defined this as a work area and, and specifically put people on notice uh, as well as uh, the contractor and try and get the contractor to define how he proposes to store materials and define areas, let's say, that we want him to store materials as compared to out here in the front or where we want to do it. I, I, I think this is something that has to be done with the contractor and say, hey, there's certain areas that we want you, we, we will allow you to have heavy trucks and heavy construction equipment and there are other areas that we don't want. For example, and I'm gathering from listening to the board that, that this being the access to the school grounds, uh, the entrance drive here, which will be the primary entrance into this area uh, for the portico because this is a, a one-way drive that, that we want to keep as much of the stuff, you know. But then again, does this mean that we are automatically putting this playground off limit, you see? and so. It has to be, um, I think it has to be something that's negotiated between the, the school board and the contractor, and he has to be made aware of the concerns that you people are expressing and saying, okay, we've got to have something defined so that if you come back and say to us, what are we doing, we can point out what, what we are going to do here. Ernie, let me ask you, as far as barriers are concerned, when I was asking you about the ordinance in terms of your ability to enforce certain requirements does that would that permit you for example if you felt that a snow fence was not adequate to require a chain link fence or some other kind of barrier to prevent access to the construction site do you have that authority under any of our ordinances uh, i believe we do have it under the building code and um, generally all the statutes and laws we have recognize a four foot high fence as being adequate for example around pools etc um, I think the thinking is that if a child is old enough to get over the fence, then he's, he, he can understand something, okay? That may not always be true, but uh, that would probably be adequate in the outer perimeters, and we may want to look at something uh, in, the forms of ply, in the form of a plywood barrier, barricade, something closer to the project itself. But I think initially uh, the, the snow fence is adequate, and uh, for that purpose, but also that there just needs to be something to control the traffic in and out. Uh, so, uh, so something that will define the, the, the path of travel for those vehicles so that we don't have them going off at whatever direction they want to go and causing us problems throughout the complex. And that they, they should be limited, as, as the board suggested, to uh, uh, 
the entrance off from, uh, by the police station and not be allowed to use Scott Dyer Road. And perhaps some temporary signage or something at, at Scott Dyer Road. Should, I was thinking about that. I think there ought to be uh, signs up there no saying no construction vehicles. vehicles or whatever, <coughs> or even making it a one way for whatever is necessary to keep those people out of that area. I think might serve a purpose. What do other board members think about the issue of type of barrier uh, and or a person, a safety type, or a person con whose concern it is uh, with safety being on the site either all the time or uh, frequently? Well, I certainly would trust Howard's judgment on this one. And uh, I'm not sure that I would hope we might be able to get somebody all the time, but certainly frequently sounds, <laughs> sounds good to me. I would hate to have nobody there. I, it just uh, scares me a bit. Is the access area on the opposite side, Bob, is that, is that capable of handling uh, two-lane traffic, traffic, two, two lanes? Not, 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 not on this side, not on this side, but on the, on the middle side. school side. Yeah, on the middle school side. In other words, what I'm asking is, is there any way that we This could, could be, or that we could cordon this off? The, right, that we could cordon that, that area off so that, so that we eliminate traffic in that particular corner of the I, I really don't know. I think you could, I think you could, you know, but the people that are going to want to drop children off in here, you know, they're not going to want to come, you know, they're going to, you know, come this way and go up through here, I think. I, I don't, it's kind of hard to, t to, to change our, our habits. <laughs> well, I think that if we could, uh, no, the other, the, the Scott this. Dyer end, I think that if we could somehow be sure that the children who were using that Pine Cove building for the preschool summer program. Use the entrance, that little semicircular drive here. Scott Dyer yes. To go in and out. That, that would help. You know, in other words, people could drop off here, or, or actually they could drop off here. If we cordon this off, then they could, they could, you know, the public could have access here, and this could be cordoned off. I don't think there's, I think the road and the parking is such that that most of your construction traffic will come into the site from 77. I don't think there's any question about that. As far as his leaving the site, it's a matter of going back out. You know, it's, again, if this wants to be cordoned off or, or this wants to, you know, Mike. this is something we can do with the, with the contractor. Yeah. Just, I've been listening for a, a little while. Uh, I think I'd like to remind the board that within the last five years, uh, first of all, we undertook a reconstruction of the Thomas Moyer Library, which is immediately adjacent to this property, which abuts on the Pond Cove School playground land, about a $600,000 renovation. Uh, at no time were we required to have a full-time town staff member uh, on site. Uh, at all times, I think you know the principals in the schools would say that the, the community was extremely responsive to safety. It was cut off uh, access immediately around the building to make sure we found everyone totally cooperative. Uh, subsequent to that, we built a track and soccer field uh, down at the high school, about a $300,000 project that, uh, again, was involved right during the middle of the summer, even went into the school year. Again, uh, we used every safety precaution that we could. Again, we did not have a person on site full time. Uh, during the last two years, we had a sewer construction project. Within that, a, two new soccer uh, softball fields were built again adjacent to the school grounds. Uh, again, we did not have anyone on site uh, permanently. And one thing that was very helpful was that as conditions changed, we shifted the safety requirements during the project uh, to make sure that safety was always paramount. I think you know if the board tonight tries to set a whole lot of rules and regulations up front on it shall be done this way, it shall be done that way, then we go ahead and do the project. We find that it isn't working. You know, what do we do out there on a Wednesday afternoon when uh, suddenly, you know, someone needs to get through and they can't? 
uh, you know, I, I would hope that you would give the school department and the community uh, a little bit of flexibility and trust us a little bit that, you know, we will keep safety in mind. Uh, we have a, a fire chief, a police chief that look out the window at this project every day from upstairs here in the town hall. They can look out and they can see it. You know, Ernie will be there all the time and I can, can assure you that we will not let safety be compromised. And I would hope that you would look at our track record of projects in the area and try to keep the restrictions uh, on this project uh, as uh, few as possible in, in order to ensure that safety is, is truly looked at at all times and that we are able to make the decisions that we need to make in order to make sure safety is always at the top. When the library project was under construction, what kind of barrier was constructed around the construction materials? My recollection is it was, that it was a uh, snow fence. Anyone? No offense. During the entire project? During the entire project. Okay. How about the uh, playing fields off the high school? The playing fields, nothing was required and there was, there was no problem. Uh, community services did an excellent job of uh, working with the children to keep them away. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Just say Peter, what? I, if I could make a comment. Um, this project I think the difference that I see is that the potential with a number of children uh, in the in the school ground area is different than in a house lot where even though there might be a, a few children living in adjacent properties, the potential is larger here because you have a, potentially a lot more children in the vicinity. And I think that that uh, calls for greater con concern and consideration than if you're talking about a home construction. Secondly, we don't have any control over somebody who builds a house, we do have control over conditional uses and conditions that we can place on them. But I think it, I think the distinction, at least in my mind, would be the potential being greater here because of the potential for a lot of more kids to be in the vicinity than in, than some of the examples that you were talking about. Downtown Portland, you have a construction strike site going on. First of all, I see big plywood fences around it. I don't see snow fences around construction sites uh, in downtown Portland. But you don't have a lot of children running around either, uh, small children anyway. I'm just uh, a little surprised that snow fencing, quite frankly, is an adequate barrier to keep people out. But if it's worked successfully in the past, uh, um, that certainly is something that I was not aware of. Well, where are we on the issue of either safety supervision or barriers? I guess we have three choices, at least. Three, of, three that have been up for discussion. One is a person there. Another is a barrier beyond uh, snow fencing. And what I guess the applicant or appellant is proposing is uh, basically to have some snow fencing around the construction site, which apparently is not atypical uh, for this kind of a project, at least in terms of this town's history, as opposed to other sites that I'm at least visually familiar with. The provision could be made to have safety uh, provisions acceptable to an uh, appropriate, appropriately responsible party, and perhaps there any. Uh, well, that, I think the condition. And then leave the element of judgment in there. Well, I think the condition that I had spelled out, the third condition, indicated after prohibiting access uh, children to be have access to either of the adjacent buildings, did say adequate barriers uh, around the construction site, and I. And yeah. I intended by that that it would be up to Ernie to enforce that with what he considered to be an adequate uh, barrier and signage. 
uh, appropriate signage in the drive areas and in the buildings, uh, warning people and cautioning people. Of, and I would add to that, I think there ought to be some signs at the Scott Dyer end prohibiting construction vehicles. That would satisfy uh, my concerns. But Howard went beyond that and said he would like to see a person there full time. And then we got into the discussion about a better type of bar or defining the kind of barrier system that would be there beyond the snow fence. And I think that's where we are now as to whether we're going to go beyond what I proposed, which was just basically adequate barriers, whatever, however that is uh, uh, interpreted by the code enforcement officer. Could I, could I make a suggestion that perhaps the board consider allowing myself, the police chief and the fire chief to review this and put in place what we feel that collectively is required to protect not only the children, but anybody else that might be in the area and that to our own system periodically, uh, we can probably visit the sites enough times during the day to ensure that they're, that they're uh, following whatever restrictions we give them. And between the three departments, I'm sure that, that uh, we, can, we can guarantee that, that we will be uh, very cautious and that we will uh, ensure the board that we'll look at every possibility and do what we feel is best for that situation. Let me try going through some, and I have a, a, a fourth condition, which is no construction prior to June 22nd. School ends on the 21st. Kids will be at school on the 21st. Is that correct? All right. That there be no construction prior to June 22nd. Um, let me go through them again. Four conditions. First one being the approval shall expire five years from this date. Second condition that access to the construction site by construction vehicles be only from Route 77 and that adequate signs be posted at Scott Dyer Road prohibiting entrance by construction vehicles. That there be no construction prior to June 22nd. And lastly, in the perhaps the most difficult one, that no children under the age of 18 be permitted to use either of the buildings immediately adjacent to the construction site, that adequate barriers be placed around the construction site as determined by the code enforcement officer, the police chief, and the fire chief, and that adequate warning or caution signs be placed on the buildings immediately adjacent to the construction site and in the drive areas around the construction site. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, you know, the charter provides that those three persons are report to the town manager. And it's my responsibility in the charter to see that the ordinances and regulations of the town are uh, faithfully followed. Uh, I feel a little bit awkward you suggesting that three folks that work for me tell me what to do. Uh, that is, in essence, what you're doing since this is a uh, municipal project and uh, I would suggest very respectfully in, in, in keeping with the town charter that you rephrase that uh, that I do that after consultation uh, with those three parties as well as with the superintendent of schools. I'd be more than happy to amend that condition to indicate where I indicated that barriers be placed around the construction site as determined by the town manager after con consultation with the code enforcement officer, the uh, police chief and the fire chief. Superintendent and the superintendent of schools. <coughs> Are there any other conditions first that anybody would propose to add? Peter, I just have one, one other thing I just, just was thinking about is uh, parking of construction um, people who, who are working there. Do you know how many, I mean, it's a small project. There's not going to be that many uh, construction workers on it. So that not, there shouldn't be any, um, or any, there shouldn't be any problem with parking um, those vehicles in the where they usually park uh, vehicles during school. And that would that would create. I, I don't see anybody. Again, that's something we'd have to review, and that's, that's part of the uh, barrier system as to where we want the vehicles to park. I, I don't see a problem with it, but again. I can probably okay. it for you. Uh, uh, that's fine. I just want to be sure that, you know, that there wasn't any hazardous conditions uh, produced. 
is there anybody that doesn't like the conditions that I read, either in terms of not wanting them at all or uh, doesn't like the uh, language of the conditions? And I'm specifically addressing the question of whether the last one ought to be as I phrased it or as uh, Howard has suggested in terms of a more uh, stringent condition on safety. Howard, are you at all satisfied by the discussion that's occurred? Or do you still feel that there ought to be more than, than what the condition I've proposed uh, suggests? I guess I was really looking for somebody to be personally responsible to see that the safety issue was addressed. I think Mr. McGovern has just said that he I, is personally well, responsible, I know, I know, although he's not going to be there that's what eight I was hours saying. a day. I feel comfortable if Mike wants to take that responsibility fully on by himself. He can require a person to be there right. if he thinks that's what's appropriate. If he doesn't and something happens, I guess he's accountable to, to the people for having made that decision. Right. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with okay. that. Are there any other conditions that people think ought to be required? Assuming we're going to approve this in the first place. <laughs> Are fine, but I would just like to emphasize once again that my primary concern about this whole issue is that we is that there are going to be children there in that vicinity for at least six weeks during the summer on a regular basis, and I think that's something that absolutely has to be kept in mind for every decision that's made about what happens on that site. It certainly isn't the same as doing it if there were as if there were no children around on a regular basis, and I just don't think we anybody can lose sight of that. I agree with you, and although, Mike, I don't want to debate the three or four projects that you mentioned, the ones down by the high school, even though I guess somebody could argue with me about the maturity of high school students, is a little different than uh, great young children in grade school in terms of their, their maturity, and although perhaps the library project is comparable in terms of its proximity to the uh, Pond, Pond Cove School, the high school area is really a different, different area. And, I think different considerations than up in the area that we're talking about. I agree, except the projects I was mentioning all went on during the summer when the summer program was going All right. I will make a motion to approve the conditional use, the appeal for the conditional use, subject to the conditions that I've stated, and I'm not going to repeat them. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Those opposed? 5 0. Okay. We have uh, one further matter on a workshop to discuss tonight, which arose at our last meeting uh, concerning decks and what part of the ordinance we're going to consider them under. Before we started, Nancy said that it would be helpful to her and maybe it would be helpful to everybody if we sort of retrace where the discussion went last uh, two weeks ago, whenever it was we were here. And so that we all focus on what the issue is. Uh, has everybody had a chance to read Tom Leahy's letter? Well, then why don't we take uh, why don't we take a ten minute break and everybody can read the letter and because uh, I think that would be helpful in the context of the discussion. Do you need help with those conditions? No, I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> You got a condition to use. Oh, oh, okay, I got you. Because you just got to make findings of fact on, the, on each of the standards mm -hmm. and the conditions and why they were. That thing's going to be level of the standard. Probably. It's going to be shady since the silver is in front of the bill or something. I mean, probably. Well, battleship for it. Years, we're going to tear it down. <laughs> and the way I phrase the condition is that it expires, not that they have to come back here for an extension. It expires. We can go the five years. We can go. Anybody, they're in violation after five years. Personal sense of the order. 